Okay, so I pull down. Let's continue. Okay, so before we continue, so there is another question from the chat which I forgot. So um, the other advantage that the student is listing here in the chat is with policy gradient based approaches, it is very easy to do continuous action spaces. So, but I think I did not talk about it because we will talk about it towards the end. So with value based methods, right? Let's say you need state action value. Right now, imagine you are doing some continuous controls, like where the action is a continuous value. Okay. okay. Now it could be the torque or like speed or velocity that you are estimating. Like right. Like so. Now with action value methods, like you have to at least the naive way is you should consider all possible actions to pick the best option, which means you have infinite number of actions possible, right? So it is not very clear how to do action value methods for continuous uh, action spaces. Of course, there are a lot of ways in which you could come up with ideas to do that, right? So like one simple heuristic is discretize the action space, right? Like and, and, and use action value estimates, right? Like, so there are many other ways to do that, but we will not talk about it, uh, in this, at least for this introductory code. Uh, but with policy gradient methods, as we will see towards the end, like so, it is very trivial to extend these algorithms to continuous action spaces. So, for most of the robotics applications, like you will see uh, policy gradient methods to be like more prevalent, mainly because uh, it can handle continuous actions much easily. But we will talk about it uh, like after some time. Okay, so now let's get to the policy gradient theorem. Like so. Now, this is my performance measure, okay? Now, the, the big task here is to compute gradient of your parameters theta with respect to this performance measure, okay? Now, here is the problem. So this performance measure is not just dependent on your action, right? So it depends on your action selection, Okay, which is done by the policy, so you can compute gradients easily with respect to the policy. But this also depends on the distribution of the states. Right? Because from the current state, you take an action which is based on the policy. But the next scale that you are going to go, right? It is not just based on the policy, it is also based on the transition dynamics. Right now, if I have to take, if I have to compute gradient through this process, then I need access to the transition dynamics, and also it is actually very complicated to take that gradient computation. Okay, now how do I approximate this? Right, like so. Now, this is where policy gradient theorem helps us. Okay, so policy gradient theorem gives us something which is computable. Okay, and also proves that this computable quantity is directly proportional to the gradient that you would receive if you computed the true gradient. Okay, now if you think about it, when you're doing gradient descent or gradient ascent, what is really important is the direction, right? Like not the magnitude, because whatever the magnitude is, like depending on the alpha, you're going to shrink or like it's expanded, right? So so what really matters is like I get some gradient which is proportional to the true gradient, right? Now this is the gradient that uh, is proportional to J of theta. Okay, so the gradient with respect to J of theta, which is what we want to compute, which is what we cannot compute, okay, is actually proportional to the following entity. So which is summation over all possible yes, mu of yes, summation over y, q pi of s comma a and gradient with respect to gradient of pi of a given s theta. Is it clear? 
Now, here the mu is something that we have already seen before. This is a steady state distribution of the on policy, like the policy that you are following, right? Now, I can also write this as an expected entity. So, this is actually proportional to expectation with respect to pi, okay? Summation over A, Q pi of S comma A, gradient of is that clear? Now, first of all, we are going to prove that this is indeed true. Okay. But if this is true, right, so then it is really remarkable because now I can actually have some approximation for the gradient with respect to Jf theta. And this approximation is only dependent on these two terms. Okay. Now, the first term is just the action value. Right? So it's easy to estimate. You can use return, you can use value function, whatever you want. Now the second term is just gradient with respect to the policy. Right? So which is easy to compute again. Now both are easy to compute. This is a very tractable uh, gradient. Okay, so this gradient is very tractable. And indeed it is also proportional to the true gradient that you are looking for. So every step that we are going to take with respect to this gradient, right, is going to guarantee that we are maximizing the j of theta that we want to maximize. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay. Now let us actually prove that this proportion in that indeed holds. Okay. Now. So what we care about is gradient with respect to j of theta, which is value of some state, right? So it's basically gradient with respect to v pi of s. Is that right? Now, this gradient with respect to v pi of s is given by gradient Okay, I can expand what is v pi of s. Okay, so v pi of s is basically summation over a pi of a given s q pi of s comma a. Is that right? So nothing complicated here. Like I have just written the value of a state as a function of value of state action parameters. Okay, now. Now I want to compute gradient for summation of a bunch of things. Okay, so by linearity of summations, I can just the sum like I can actually move the summation out. Okay, and compute gradient with respect to pi of a given s q pi of s comma a. Okay, now. This is gradient of AB or UV. So, so you can use the UV rule for computing gradients. Like so, this is UDV, UDV plus UDU, right? So, so this becomes summation over A. Okay. Now, gradient with respect to pi of A, where the second one is just as such, plus pi of A given yes gradient with respect to q pi of s comma a. Is that clear? So what have I done here? Like I have just done the product rule of calculus, right? Like so you have u and v, so I'm writing it as vdu plus ud. Is that clear? Now, if you think about this, what is difficult to compute here? Which of these terms is difficult to compute? So the gradient of q pi is difficult to compute, right? Like the other three terms are easy, right? So our goal is actually to somehow get rid of this gradient of q pi. Okay, so now we are going to do that by a little, little bit of algebra. Okay, so like you have to follow me closely. Okay, now this. Okay, so red thing is what? Like we want to get rid of. 
Okay, so because like it is impossible, like it's, it's very difficult to compute, like something like almost impossible. Okay, so how do I do that? Now, as like by now, like you have seen a lot of our general proofs, like so we will try to get this in some sort of recursive form so that by the end of the recursion, this goes away, right? So, so what we are going to do is that we are going to expand this Q value, okay? So this is summation over A, okay? Now, this part say, stays as such, okay? <coughs> Plus phi of A given yes, okay? Now, gradient with respect to, so we have this q pi of s comma a, right? So now q pi of s comma a is basically reward plus gamma times the value of the next state, okay? By the way, I forgot to say one thing. Like, so for this particular discussion, like we are going to set gamma is equal to one, okay? To make our things simpler, uh, but you can prove these things with gamma less than one as well. Uh, it is just that the math is going to be very nice. Okay, so we'll just set gamma is equal to one. Okay, now this just becomes summation over S dash R, okay, P of S dash R given S comma A, R plus B pi of S dash. Is that clear? Okay. So I'm really following a different notation in my hand uh, and I'm translating the notation on the fly. So I might make some mistakes with the notation, it's so catch me. Okay, so this is clear. Okay, now some other simplifications. Okay, so first of all, um, we see that we're taking gradient with respect to theta. Right? So this particular thing, the probability is not a function of theta. This is also not a function of theta, right? I can actually take these things out. So, so this becomes summation over A, okay? The first term stays as such, okay? Plus the second term, right? You are going to have, Summation over S dash R, P of S dash R given S comma A. Okay. The gradient with respect to B pi of S dash. Okay. So here you can see that there are two terms here. So you take gradient with respect to this plus gradient with respect to this. The gradient with respect to this term is zero. So that disappeared. So you just have this. Okay. So now you can see where we are going at, right? So we started with gradient with respect to v pi of s, right? Now this is actually a function of gradient with respect to v pi of s dash. Is that clear? So here, once again, you can see that there is actually no more r here, right? I don't need to do summation with respect to R, so I can further simplify this. So this becomes summation over A, okay? Gradient, so the first term. First term is simple, so we will always keep it, plus pi of A given S. Yes. Summation, this is going to be just summation over S dash. Summation over S dash, P of S dash R, so there is no R, sorry. P of S dash given S comma A, the gradient with respect to V by S dash. Is that clear? Okay, now let us actually rewrite this recursion here. Okay, so what we have is gradient of V pi of S, okay, is equivalent to <coughs> summation over all possible A, okay, so what was the first term? We'll just keep it, okay. Probably I'll just copy this. Copy. Okay, it's, ah, okay, it's difficult. Um, okay, 
I'll just put the submission over here. Submission over A. Is that clear? So now we have a recursive equation. So the gradient with respect to V pi of S is actually some form where you have gradient with respect to the next state. Okay. So now we still need to get rid of this V pi of S dash gradient, right? Like because that is also something that we cannot compute. So to do that, okay, so we are going to consider a new probability function, okay? Now, we are going to consider this function rho phi of yes to x comma k, okay? Now, I'll explain what this is. This is basically the probability of reaching state x from state yes after k steps. Is that clear? So this is probability of reaching state x from yes after k steps. Exactly k steps or k or more steps? Um, exactly k steps. Okay. Now, for example, if k is equal to zero, okay, then rho pi of yes to yes for k is equal to zero is equal to one. Is that clear? Now, k is, when k is equal to one, we can use the transition function, right? So when k is equal to one, okay, then rho pi of yes to some yes dash given k is equal to one is nothing but you consider all possible actions. What is the probability of taking that action and what is the probability of reaching that state? Okay, so it's basically summation over A the probability of taking that action with respect to theta, like the policy parameter theta, okay, multiplied by P of S dash given S comma A. Is that clear? Yeah. Is that uh, mu of S? Yeah, it is like mu of S. Okay, now what we are interested in is like, when k value increases, okay? So like, imagine that from s, you want to go to x, okay? So after k plus one steps, okay? I can kind of write this as going from yes to yes, some yes dash in k steps, okay? And from yes dash going to x. Is that clear? So which means the rho pi of s to x for k plus one steps can actually be decomposed for going from s to s dash and then s dash to x. So summation over all possible s dash, the intermediate state that you can reach. So what is the probability of reaching that state in k steps multiplied by rho pi of s dash to x in one step? Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay. Now the reason why I took this small detour, so this whole thing is because we are going to use this idea of row function in our way to get rid of the gradient with respect to VP of this. Okay. Now, just to make things simpler, right? Like, so we are going to repeat this equation again and again. So <coughs> the first summation that you are seeing here right? This will always keep it because this is what we finally want, right? So, so we're going to call this first summation as some P of S so just to make our notation simple. Okay. So now I'm going to rewrite this equation. Okay. So let me copy this equation. So to the next page. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this equation as basically phi of s plus summation over a phi of a given s summation over s dash p of s dash given s a gradient with respect to v phi sorry okay well i wish i had time to change these notations v phi of s dash is that clear 
So I did not do anything here. Like I just made something as fee office because you're going to keep it as such. Okay, so now we are going to do like a bit of moving things around. Okay, so now I can actually bring this summation over yes dash outside without affecting uh, the equation. Okay, so this becomes phi of yes is equal to the phi of s plus summation over yes dash summation over a phi of a given yes p of s dash given s comma a the gradient with respect to e phi of s dash is that clear they are both same you can get convinced offline okay now what is this part so what is this part that you are seeing here Maybe I'll just this part. Yeah. Rho yeah. Rho pi of s t s dash with one, right? So now I can actually write this as. Okay, I'll just use the same color to be consistent. So phi of yes plus summation over s yes dash rho pi of s yes to s yes dash comma one gradient with respect to v pi of s dash. Is that clear? Now I'm actually, okay, this is gradient with respect to V pi of yes. Okay. So now I'm actually ready to uh, unroll this recurrence. Okay. So I can unroll and then you will see that V pi disappears finally. So this is basically phi of yes plus summation over s dash. Okay. Rho pi of yes to s dash comma one. Okay. Now, what is this term? So this is something I can unroll, right? Like it is same as this equation. So I'm going to write it again. Maybe I'll use different color. So, so this is basically phi of yes dash plus summation over all possible next states. Let's call it yes double dash. Okay. So what is the rho pi of yes dash to yes double dash in one step? And gradient with respect to v pi of s yes double dash. Right? So I just expanded the recurrence once. Okay. Now, what is this? So phi of s yes plus summation over s yes dash rho pi of s yes to s yes dash one phi of s yes dash. Okay plus, okay, summation over yes dash. Okay, here I'm going to make a jump. Okay, so the second term is actually double summation. So this is actually summation over yes and summation over yes dash, right? I'm going to make a jump here, like by using my row function. Okay, I'm going to call this as summation over all yes da double dash row Phi of moving from s to s dash to gradient with respect to v phi of s dash. That's the dash. So what have I done here? So I actually grow from s to s dash, s dash to s double dash, right? Now I can just put this thing together with the help of the row function. So this becomes rho pi of s to s double dash in two steps on this. Okay, so now you see where we are going. So now we have this thing, which we can again expand. Okay, let me copy this to the next page. Copy. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so now this becomes phi of yes, plus summation over s dash, rho pi of s to s dash, comma one phi of s dash, okay, plus summation over s double dash, rho pi of s to s double dash in two, okay, I mean, I'm going to expand this, so it becomes phi of s double dash, plus summation over s triple dash, rho pi of s to s triple dash, in three steps, gradient with respect to v pi of s triple dash. Okay, and so on. 
I can just keep on expanding this until I reach the final state, right? So now, a concise way of putting this is summation over all possible yes. Okay, summation over k is equal to let's just say all possible x belongs to yes, k is equal to zero to infinity. Okay, rho pi of yes to x k multiplied by phi of x. Is that clear? So now, with the help of the row functions, I have completely removed the gradient with respect to the value function. Right? Now, so this is my, this is actually, let's move it a little bit here. So this is actually my gradient with respect to j of theta, which was gradient with respect to v pi of s, zero. Right? Now, what is this term intuitively? So this is roughly the average length of the episode in episodic case. Okay, because you are considering all possible states and you're considering all possible probabilities of reaching these states. Okay, so roughly, so the thing that you are seeing here, okay, so we are going to call this as eta, okay, so we are going to call this a summation over yes belonging to yes, eta of yes, phi of yes, okay, where this eta, right, like so when you do, when you do this summation over yes, eta of yes. So, so just this particular term, eta of yes, so that is roughly the visitation frequency for one particular state. Like for one particular state, throughout my lifetime, like what are the different probabilities of reaching that state, okay? When I sum this over yes, like, like all possible states, this is the average episode length. Is that clear? Okay, so now I can actually construct like I can normalize this eta so that it is a valid probability distribution. Okay, so now this becomes, I need to normalize this. So I'm going to make it as summation over S eta of yes. Okay, summation over yes, eta of yes divided by summation over S eta of yes. Phi of yes. I have just divided and like I just not like really normalized it. To, to make this a valid probability distribution. Okay, now this is my normalization factor. Or the constant of proportionality, okay? So now I can just say this is actually proportional to summation over yes, eta of yes divided by summation over s eta of yes, p of yes. Is that clear? Now, what is this particular probability distribution? This is the probability of being in a state. So when I have an on policy distribution, like the, this is basically the mu function, right? the steady state probability of being in that state. So this is actually proportional to summation over yes, mu of yes, okay? multiplied by phi of yes. Okay, I think now is the time to write down what was p of yes. So if you, if you remember, our phi of yes was basically summation over yes, mu of yes, okay. Summation over y, gradient with respect to pi of y given yes, q pi of s comma y. Right, so that was the first term. So, gradient with respect to V pi of yes is proportional to this. Is that clear? 
So now we have essentially proved that if you want to compute gradient with respect to v pi of s, which is what we care about, it is actually proportional to computing gradient with respect to this particular term, where everything is computable. Okay, so okay, yeah. yeah. The notations are kind of confusing. So on the left hand side you have s, and on the summation also you have s. We like which s is our which. Ah, okay. Sorry, so that is my mistake. So let us just call this as j of. So this proof in the book actually skips a lot of steps. I haven't updated the schedule with uh, other references. Like so, there is actually a very like there is a really nice blog post about policy gradient methods, uh, which teaches you this step by step, really elementarily. Like well, we did cover everything elementary today. Uh, I'll I'll put that as a reading for this week. Okay, so like of course it's a very long blog post which covers even things which we don't discuss in the class. Uh, if you are interested in learning more, that's a good reading. Okay, so this is good. So now we have proved that, like, if you take gradient with respect to this particular entity, like, you are guaranteed to improve your performance with theta, right? So we have set all the foundations. So now let us actually exploit this fact and develop, maybe first with simple policy gradient algorithms, okay? So first we are going to see a simple... Monte Carlo policy gradient. Okay, so this algorithm is actually well. Maybe before seeing the first algorithm, let's let's rem, let's quickly recap, right? So, the gradient of j of theta is proportional to summation over s mu of s, summation over a q pi of s comma a gradient of pi of a given s, right? Now, I can also write this as expected value of summation over a, q pi of s comma a, gradient with respect to pi of a given s. So now, whenever you have an expectation, you can take stochastic approximations based on a sample, right? So, so here is our first simple stochastic gradient doesn't algorithm so theta t plus one is equal to theta t plus alpha times okay instead of taking the expectation i'm going to do the sample so i'll just have summation over a q hat because we are using function approximation okay so q hat of s t comma a w gradient with respect to a given s t theta Okay, so now this algorithm is an all, all actions method because it considers all possible actions and compute gradient using Q value and the policy, right? right? Like so you, the Q value has parameters W and policy has parameter theta, right? Now, this is one possible instantiation of policy gradient, okay? However, we are going to see, let's just one example. However, we are going to see a much more simpler algorithm, okay? So, which is called reinforce all caps, okay? So, this is one of the like earliest algorithms, uh, like in the reinforcement learning literature uh, in, in policy gradient space. So, this was by Williams, 1992. Okay, so the basic idea in reinforce is to make this even simpler. So instead of considering all possible actions, I'm going to make two approximations here, okay? So the first approximation is instead of considering all possible actions, I'm just going to consider the sample action, AT. Okay, I'm approximating the sum with just one entry of a sum. The second approximation I'm going to do is instead of considering the Q value, which I have to learn, I will approximate it with the sample return. Okay, so that is a true Monte Carlo policy gradient algorithm. Okay, so the update is going to look something like this. So the gradient 
is proportional to expected value of okay with respect to pi summation over a pi of a given s t theta okay q pi of s t comma a uh, okay, i think i missed something I'll, I'll rewrite this in the next page Yeah, okay. So now the gradient with respect to j of theta, okay, is proportional to e pi of summation over a, okay. So q pi of st comma a and gradient with respect to pi of a given st. Is that right? Is this what we have before? Yes. Right? Now, this is what the policy gradient theorem gives us, right? So now I'm going to make some changes here. Like, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply and divide by pi of a given as t theta. Okay, so q pi of st a, the gradient of pi of a given st theta divided by pi of a st theta. Is that clear? So, well, I did not do much. So like, all I have done is like I just multiplied and divided by pi of a given st comma theta. Okay, it will become clear why in a few steps. Okay, now this is actually. Now, instead of considering different possible actions, like all possible actions, right? The first thing that we are going to do is like replacing this with a sample action, AT, okay? So expectation with respect to pi, okay? So instead of this whole summation over all possible actions, I'm just going to take one possible action, so which is my current action. So this is going to become Q pi of ST AT, Okay, gradient of pi of a is t given theta divided by pi of a t. Sorry, this is a t, a t given s t theta. Okay, so this was my first approximation. The approximation here is instead of considering all possible actions, I'm considering one possible action. The second approximation that I'm going to make is instead of considering Q pi, which I actually have to estimate. So how about I make it simpler? Just use sample return, right? So now this becomes expectation with respect to pi, gt times the gradient pi pi of at. Is that clear? So now here is my reinforce update. So theta t plus one is equal to theta t plus alpha times gt gradient with respect to pi of at given st theta divided by pi of at given st theta. Is that clear? Now, let's look at this algorithm that we have here, right? Like so, now, once I bring this to this far, irrespective of how I approach here, this is actually a very intuitive algorithm, okay? Now, you can see some parallel with the supervised learning setting, okay? So in the case of supervised learning, you know the right action, so you just maximize the probability of the right action, right? But in the case of reinforcement, you don't know what is the right action, right? So what reinforce is trying to do is computing gradient with respect to the action, okay? Now this action, 
is going to have like value updated, like the preference updated, depending on GT. It is directly proportional to GT. Okay. So let's say I take an action, it gives me 10 return. And there's another action which gives me 100 return. Okay. Now the first one's gradient is multiplied by 10, the second one's gradient is multiplied by 100. Right. So, so now the larger the return, the stronger the preference to reach towards that. Okay. So this is very intuitive. Now look at the denominator. So now this whole gradient is divided by the probability of say, taking that action. So can someone explain why should we do that? Or should we just remove it? Like why should we do that? So why should my update be inversely proportional to the probability of taking that action? Because with more probability, we'll see the returns again. Yeah, so or you could reach suboptimal policies, right? Like, so, like, you, you, you see an action, it gives you high return, right? Now, you're going to increase the probability, like, basically, it's like rich get richer. Like, so, like, once you see it, there is more chance to see it again. There is more chance to see it again, right? Like, so, like, so you kind of want to encourage the algorithm to <coughs> observe other actions as well. So, so like you kind of force it by making it inversely proportional to the visitation frequency. Is that clear? Is that clear? Now, this is a Monte Carlo approach, right? Like because you are using GP, which means you can use this first of all only for episodic cases and the episode has to terminate and this is going to have high variance because these are sample returns and also it's going to be a slow learner. Right. So now, of course, this is our first algorithm. So we're going to improve on this further. Uh, one quick note, right? Like, so now I can actually rewrite this equation into something that you would often see in different resources and textbooks. So which is theta t plus one is equal to theta t plus alpha times, okay, gt, okay, gradient with respect to ln pi of a t given as t. Okay, so when you implement reinforce in your third assignment, so this is how you're going to implement it. Okay, so there's nothing magical here. So when you take gradient with respect to ln pi, it is one over pi multiplied with gradient with respect to pi, right? So that is just a closed, like in like compact notation for the same thing. Okay, so now it looks very close to supervised learning because in supervised learning, when you want to maximize the likelihood, you'll maximize ln pi, right? Now, instead of just maximizing ln pi, I'm, I'm weighting that with my return gt. Is that clear? Okay, so here is the reinforce algorithm. So you can see that you are, you have some policy pi. Now, this could be a linear function or it could be a neural network, okay? Now, you have some step size alpha, you initialize the par policy parameters. You first generate an episode, when you go in reverse, this is a Monte Carlo model, so you have to compute the return. So you go in reverse, compute the return, do the update. Very, 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 very simple algorithm, right? So just a few lines. It's going to be even more simple if you're using something like PyTorch, like where you don't need to compute this gradient in, by hand, okay? So the gradients will be computed automatically for you. Now, I think here is the example like that we have seen before, the four state example, right? So you can see that with careful tuning of alpha, this basic reinforce algorithm can actually achieve the optimal policy. Okay. So any questions so far about reinforce? Any questions? Are there any questions in the chat? No. Okay. Now we have a very basic algorithm to begin with. So to remind us again, so the algorithm is theta t plus one is equal to theta t plus alpha times gt gradient of ln phi of at given st. 
right? So this is our reinforce algorithm. Now, if you remember our discussion on gradient bandits, right? So we had this concept of baselines. Can someone remind me what was the use of baselines in gradient bandits? So that this was a interaction between the one and the other one. Okay. Okay. Any other answer? Move in which direction based on the average rewards? Okay, I think both the answers are similar. Like it gives you some direction, but the gradients are already giving you some direction. So why do we need baseline? What is the advantage of this? Like, well, you have done assignment one, right? So you did both gradient banded and gradient banded with baseline. So, so what was the difference between these two algorithms? It performs better, and why do you think that is the case? There's no explosion. Sorry? There's no explosion of gradients, so we are kind of normalizing. You are normalizing. Okay, these are all the side benefits, right? Like the, the main benefit of using a baseline is that it helps us to learn faster, like by reducing the variance. Okay, now. Because we are in sample return setting, right? Like, so you are going to have high variance, and baselines are going to help you reduce this variance. Okay, so now we can also dev extend reinforce with reinforce with baseline. Okay, now the idea is really simple. Like, you just take the let us take the policy gradient theorem first. So gradient of J of theta is proportional to summation over S mu of S, summation over A, Q pi of S comma A minus B of S. I'm going to add a baseline in the gradient of pi of A given S theta. Okay. Now, policy gradient theorem holds even if you have the baseline. Okay. So why is that the case? It is simply because the gradient, like, like you're including this BS, right? So, so this term that you have, right? So its gradient is going to be zero. Okay. Now, summation over A, okay, B of S, gradient pi of A given S. Consider the second term. Right? So I'm just, I just took the second term out, okay? Now, it's easy to show that this term is actually equal to zero because the baseline does not depend on the action, okay? Now, that is the assumption. The assumption is baseline does not depend on the action, in which case B of S comes outside <coughs> and your know, summation over A, the gradient. Okay, so now what is this? So this is for all possible actions, what is the change that you are making, right? Now, when you sum all these changes, it sums to zero, right? Like, so you're just moving. If you move, push one action up, you're pushing the other action down equally, right? So now this is basically B of S with gradient of one to zero. Is it clear? Now, so this means I can actually do reinforce with baseline. Okay, the algorithm is really simple. So theta t plus one is equal to theta t plus alpha times gt minus b of st, okay, and ln phi of a t given st theta t. Is that clear? So probably I'll take a few more minutes to finish <coughs> this, and then we'll take a break, okay? So I don't want to uh, continue with baselines uh, after the break. Okay, now in this case, like your baseline B, right? If you remember about gradient bandits, the baseline was simply an average over all the actions that you have seen so far, right? Now, you cannot do the same in reinforcement learning because different states could have different baselines. For example, a state is highly valued, then all the actions might have like high values. Like so, like you need a higher baseline for that state. 
when compared to a state which is a low Lie bucket. So your B is going to be often a function of state. Is that clear? Remember that it cannot be a function of action, but it can be a function of state. Okay. Now, with very simple grid words, you can actually estimate this, like Monte Carlo, right? However, it is going to be like like simple tabular Monte Carlo. However, if you have a lots of states, right? Like so, like and like different visitation frequencies, then you might need to use some function approximators, right? So one natural base, like uh, choice for this baseline is to just use the value function of the state. Okay, so I'm going to take this equation. So just give me a couple of minutes and then I will leave you for a break. So I'm going to put this here. Okay, now I can kind of approximate this as theta t plus alpha times gt minus v of st given w times ln phi of at given st theta. Is it clear? Now the question is how do I estimate v? Well, of course, we are in Monte Carlo now. So you can just do any Monte Carlo with function approximation for estimating V. Okay. So here is the reinforced with baseline algorithm. Okay. So in this case, like we have the policy function approximator, we also have state value function approximator. Okay. So for both the function approximators, we are going to have separate learning rates. It is important that you have separate learning rates. Okay. If you have the same learning rate, it is going to be very difficult to tune it. Now you generate the episode. You compute the return. Okay. Now you compute the error for value function. So you do the value function update. So until now, this is Monte Carlo value function approximation. So then this part is your policy gradient. So you're combining reinforce with baseline. Is that clear? So here is the comparison of both in the same uh, four state world. Okay, so here you can see that, well, of course, the basic reinforce achieves the optimal policy, but reinforced with baseline achieves it like much more faster. Like it is, it is faster when compared to the naive reinforce. Is that clear? Okay, so we will stop here and take a 10 minute break. So we will continue at 11.35.